all begins with the dreams. Breathe. Into the mind of a high one? I hope you're joking. You're not the same as all of them. This was their last stand. They are afraid of us. I feel it. You've killed us. You've killed us all. You have just shown me the solution. Be gone, Phantom. Be gone and leave me to my slumber. Then... Then this isn't a dream. You really are here. But why? The Prophet dies when the Emperor leaves him. This is the course of the game. It has always been so. Explain yourself. How did you find this place? Why do you still exist? Her? But why? She does not have a mind. She does not have feelings. So why should she do this? But... Still you speak the truth. I can feel it. Then could it really be... That the unlikeliest of all eventualities has become reality and brought you here. Coincidence or caprice, I do not know. The Veiled Woman cannot be understood. <sighs> I am sorry. It's been too long since I've spoken to anyone. I have had many names. The Arkarians call Guardian. me the God of Death. The Moonskin people, the Warden of Dreams. The Pyreans, and the Demon of the Deep. For your people I am, or, or was, the Black Guardian. Pompous names I know. However, I am none of these, neither God nor Demon. I am only an eye, condemned to observe again and again. As you measure time, older than your most daring chronicles go back, by far. I have seen them all, since our people fell. Every civilization, every cleansing, every turn of the cycle. But, no, the Starlings came long after me. 
I was only a fool who wanted to save his own skin at any cost. I knew the Clinton would come. I had known it long before the Red Madness and the war started. But I also knew that fighting it as my people did, and as most do, was pointless. So I looked for another way to prevail. And I found it. Uh, what you see here is the result. The Goliath. As I like to call it back then. No. Joining the Goliath meant immortality. All I had to do was sleep and awaken once more when the cycle started again and new life came forth. Except that this new life would not have been defenseless. I would have been a true god to them. One capable of protecting them from the High Ones. No imaginary figure like the Creator. No false gods like the Lightborn were, to speak in your language. What is it? My self-dug grave. What it was meant to be was a body of steel, an immortal machine with which I planned to merge my consciousness. Only organic life could be reaped by the High Ones. And I thought that by becoming a machine, I, I could fool them. By the name of the sun, how brilliant I thought myself. I wanted to become a god, laughing in the face of time. But let me spare you my self-pity. What happened, happened. As the only one of my people? Yes. But it happened faster than it should have. And when the cleansing occurred, the Goliath was not yet finished. And as the Emperor unleashed the light, I had no choice but to complete the joining too early. A fatal error, as it turned out. I did survive, yes. But I am trapped inside this unfinished machine. And ever since then, all I can do is watch. Again and again. Yes. It was not how I planned it. The Goliath in its final form was meant to be divine. A synthesis of man and steel. But I overestimated myself. And I acted too quickly, driven by fear. No, no, you do not understand. You are stumbling through the fog, even now that it is almost over. By themselves. The High Ones are not the problem. If we would just see them as they really are, they would become powerless. Yes, it is hard to put into words. I myself do not know everything about the High Ones, only that they are part of something we call the Cycle. A civilization arises and blossoms and then, always at the same stage of their development, the High Ones appear, and with them, the Red Madness. People start losing their minds, wars erupt and chaos rules, until two or three years later, the cleansing happens. The moment when the High Ones devour the collective consciousness, the gathered minds of this civilization, to give birth to a new one of their own. Despite all of this, nobody knows what drives them. Perhaps they act out of malice. 
out of an urge to survive, or perhaps they do not even have a wheel of their own, but are like a force of nature. But I do know one thing, as powerful as they might be, it is mankind who gives them that power. We make them into what they are, because what nobody understands is simply this. The High Ones feed on what humanity has the most of. Their ego, greed, pride, fear, and their everlasting search for an enemy who was responsible for all their misery. It is those traits the High Ones make use of. These characteristics are what make us human. And by themselves, they are harmless. Only when we bury them, when we deny them, then they play into the High One's hands. So why is this, you ask? It is simple. The High Ones alone cannot make the cleansing happen. Only a human can. With the beacon. My knowledge about it is as limited as my knowledge about the cycle. It has existed since the beginning of time. And despite what you might now believe, the ancient writings about it are true. Lit by the ones who carry the Numenos, it can banish the High Ones once and for all. But it can also destroy us. Because what happens when it is lit without a core is far more than an explosion. It is the cleansing, the triumph of the High Ones. And even as we speak, a human, Teodor Orinthiol, has done it again. A bright light will appear from the heart of the machine and open a hole in the sky. And within hours, it will spread throughout the world and they will all feel it. A fire that burns them from within. A white light which will break through their flesh. Do you understand now? The High Ones have no power. All they do is to feed on our weaknesses, manipulate us into bringing about our own destruction. It is we who forge the sword that kills us, we who lead them to their victory. Just think for a moment. When did the High Ones ever do anything other than manipulate you? Did they ever physically influence any events? They incited the Naramis to march against you, and time and again confirmed the righteousness of both your causes. All they told you, all they showed you, was what you wanted to hear, and what you wanted to see. And yes, if you, Teolor Renthiol, 
his order, and the Neramis had never acted, the cleansing would never have happened. Maybe there is, but if so, I do not know it. But the more turns of the cycle I witness, the more I get the impression that it is some kind of trial. A cosmic game woven by powers we have not even come close to comprehending. Maybe this is just wishful thinking, to give all this pain a meaning when it does not have one. Maybe the High Ones are simply a law of nature, a concept, and we give birth to them by believing there is such a thing as an ultimate external enemy in the first place. The eternal struggle with ourselves. Perhaps that is just part of what it means to exist. Like a thousand others before him, the High Ones knew exactly what they had to do to get him to commit this last act of desperation. They played him with his weaknesses and fears, like a figure on a chessboard. And the saddest part is that until the very end, he will believe that he has done something good. That was his greatest fear, yes, to be remembered as a failure, a broken man. That was the stream the High Ones manipulated him from the moment he died, after attempting to flee from no, his prison on Nairin World. The real Arindial, he is dead, Prophetess. He is a fleshless one. One of the mightiest tools of the High Ones. Just as you are. Arvasi. I wish it were. The methods of how the High Ones influence us are plentiful. And the Red Madness and their ability to enter our dreams are not their only means. Their mightiest tool is the creation of... Projections, fleshless ones, or emissaries, as they are also called. If a person dies, and if this person has one last unfulfilled wish, a compulsion, then the High Ones have the power to create a projection of him, an immaterial image of the deceased, which thinks itself real and is perceived as such. What no one notices, not even the projection itself, are two things. Firstly, it is driven by this last unfulfilled desire. Secondly, it becomes an idealized version of its former self, almost tailor-made to free itself from the last compulsion, that ultimate scourge. The daughters of fishermen become warriors. Broken generals become charismatic and driven leaders who seem almost too determined to be real. I don't tell. You are one of these projections, as are all of the emissaries. You are a fleshless one, a spirit searching for liberation from something. I do not know your past before you came to this land. Because before you became the prophetess, you were insignificant. But what happened to you and your friend on that ship? You never survived it. You drowned in the Red Sea. And in that very moment, the High Ones entered your mind and made you into what you are today. And other than myself, the High Ones knew your compulsion, knew the desire that drove you. Whatever it was, it made you predictable, and it allowed them to play you, 
just as they played Arunthiol and Korak. Do you see it now? Every dream the High One sent you, every time they appeared to you, they all had but a single purpose. To feed your self-image, to push you in a certain direction. They wanted you to play the game for their purposes, and they succeeded. You read the echo of the future, as other prophets did before you. You helped Arinthiol reconstruct the beacon, and led him to the Numinos. When he saw that it would be taken away from him at the very last instant, his fear of failure led him into doing what he did. You are not to blame, Prophetess. You did what countless others did before you, and you did it because you thought it was the right thing to do. Only one thing is different. In all the time I have been here, never before did a projection realize its own nature. You were meant to dissolve like the rest of mankind. Yet, here you stand, and I tell you the truth. This was never meant to happen. No, it is as I said. For as long as this cycle has existed, so has the beacon. It is an element of the game, and it has the power to end it, whether in favor of the High Ones, or in favor of mankind. Yet for as long as I have been trapped here, <laughs> the latter has never happened. The Starlings, in their time, were called the Yalam Rashe. And yes, they manipulated the game in their favor. Their goals were similar to mine when I created the Goliath. They were a small circle of highly intelligent craftsmen and mages. And just like myself, they did not think the cycle could be won by the beacon alone. So by unknown means, they fled into the sky and created something that protected their city from the cleansing. Yes, but knowledge about their history is sparse, since the Star City was almost beyond the reach of my eye. But I know that its first centuries were glorious. The Yalam Rashe lived in harmony and their society was the pinnacle of all that mankind could be. With time, however, their population grew. They became too numerous for their small city. Yeah, I'm to and so to I have they invented their golden rules, <laughs> which were supposed to control their growth. Having children was regulated now, and those who were found guilty of a crime were punished heavily. The worst sentence was being exiled. The convicted were robbed of their memories and sent back ah. to Earth. This is where the starlings of your world come from, do you see? And this is why they all feel this longing to return to a far distant place in the stars. It is an ancestral memory. I do not know. As I said, my knowledge about the Starlings was always limited. All I do know is that one day they were gone. I could not feel them anymore. By that time, their society had become but a shadow of what it once was. But whether they destroyed themselves or left for some place else. I will never find out. Oh, 
Oh, stop it. No, it is too late for that. By the name of the sun, it is so ironic that the Veiled Woman did not lead you here earlier. It is over, Prophetess. You are strong. But regardless of how long your power can protect you from the light of the cleansing, eventually you will dissolve too. Even if... Wait. No. Maybe. Maybe you are right. Maybe there is a way. But... No. It would be pointless. Forgive me, I... I have to... think. Yes... There could be a way. What I told you is true. Here on Earth, you would not survive the cleansing. But there is one place where you could. The Star City. I know that you brought something back from your journey there. The escape pods. And I know that they can also take you back there, for I have seen the Yalam Rashe, the ancient starvings, do so. Huh. Whatever has protected the city over all these millennia, it would protect you too. Yes, you could survive it. By the face of time, you could. No, no it would not. But that is irrelevant. You are fleshless, a projection. And just like me, time cannot touch you. Age cannot kill you. And thus you could succeed where I have failed. You could wait for the cleansing to be over. And then... Create a new humanity. Create a new humanity. It is only a matter of time until the new turn of the cycle starts. New life will come forth. First, simple life. Then human. And just like the civilizations before them, they will also fall victim to the High Ones because they will have the same weaknesses as we do. But not with your help. Mm. You could be a god to them. You could guide their ascent. You could shape a mankind free of egos and weaknesses. Uh, and by doing so, you would deprive the High Ones of their power. Just imagine, in this new world, there would be no need for a beacon, because the High Ones simply would not have any strings to pull on. Mankind will defeat them by becoming superior. Yes, I regret that I did. Please, right now, you have the chance to break a millennium old pattern. Do not let it go to waste. I beg you. Ah, you are so stubborn. But, well, you might be able to destroy the beacon itself. The light. It consumes everyone who gets too close to it. But you, as a projection, you might be able to do it. It will not stop what the beacon has already done, but it will interrupt it. However, it would mean your death. Yours and that of all life in Inderal. It is too late to save them now. And even if you succeed, it changes nothing. Yes, Korik would be dead. But do you think the High Ones would just give up? They would retreat for a few years. Decades, maybe. No more. And then it would all happen again. 
until another emissary lights the beacon. Trust me, I know humans far better than I would like to. Within a few years you would be forgotten, and they would win, as they always do. <laughs> and who would that be? Even if there were someone, do you think anyone would listen? If he were to tell them that humanity itself is to blame, that the ultimate enemy does not even exist. You are delaying the inevitable, nothing more, and you are throwing away a chance which we might never have again. Kaks vaihtoehtoa, joko kuolee, kuolee ja tuhoa Beaconin tai aloittaa uudestaan. Then you will change nothing. But what can I do? I am powerless. Go. Do what you must. And deal with the consequences. Ah, there is one more thing I need to ask of you, however. One final request. I want you to shut me down. Yes. I want to finally rest. I will not spend another thousand years watching this tragedy unfold. You could have changed it, but you did not. There is nothing I can do now. Please, do it. The switch is in front of you. That was how I connected myself to the Goliath. It will cut the connection as well. Do it. And then go. Go and fulfill your fate. Forgive me. Uh -huh. The two of us will now exchange places. I'm sorry for the deception. And if there were another way, I would not do this. You could have made the right choice, but uh -uh. you refused. And I will not see this chance go to waste. I cannot. Once this is all over, I will send someone to free you from the Goliath. But until then... Kalia pelasti. By the name of the sun, are you all right? I was so worried when. Miserable fool! I would have kept my word, but if you want to play games, fine. I have had enough time to practice. Oh, Kirash. Mom. You are not fit to become a god, you Namawar! What have you seen? What have you achieved? I deserve this! <laughs> Kerrallaan ei kukaan Okei. Halutaan sitten pelata näin. Siellä.
Ah, não é que tá ali. Oh, damn it, not again. Don't let that glowing thing reach you. Not again. Don't let that glowing thing reach you. Uh-oh. Shields are down. The generators now. I suppose the explanations will have to wait. Yup. Uh, I had a feeling that might be the case. Go on ahead. I will follow. And you are... Oh. Mm. My head, it... Feels as if it's on fire. Uh oh. This must be the cleansing. 
If this is how it feels down here, then fate have mercy on those who are on the surface. Don't you feel anything? Then the Black Guardian was right, wasn't he? What you are, your fleshlessness, it protects you. Kirash, I... I just don't understand. You are here, standing right before me, and I can see you. How... how is that possible? Could you really be an illusion? I suppose so. So... what now? Your decision, is it final? I... I don't know, but there is a secret passage into the South Quarter. If I can reach the Myrad there, I might be able to flee to one of the islands. I think I can make it... somehow. What would I do? I... I don't know, Saira. Just thinking about a question like this is so bizarre. But if I were in your position, I don't think I could just flee. I mean, look at it however you want, but the fact is that there would be a chance to save at least some of these people by destroying the beacon. Not taking that opportunity would be sentencing millions to death. But that's my rational half. You can imagine what the other voice says. I don't want to lose you. I understand. Then, in a few hours' time, the two of us will be the only survivors of mankind. That sounds so unreal. You have to prepare the escape pods. I will wait for your signal. Then we must move quickly. Even down here, this burning gets worse by the minute. I can't imagine how it will be that close to the beacon. Be careful, Saira. We can't afford any mistakes. Yeah, uh -huh. Uh-oh. Yeah, that's my life. Okay, now let's go see that. Näytti vähän Death Strandingilta. Tai jos en mä pysty muuta kuin poistumaan paikalta. Tai siis sitten tässä on toinenkin vaihtoehto. Tai itse asiassa kolme loppua.
näki sen saman numer- äh, unen kuin alussa. Hei. I don't know. When I woke up, we were here. You were still unconscious, so I thought it would be wise to let you rest a little. Just look at that. From here, it all seems so peaceful. Untouched. As if all that has happened was nothing but a bad dream. I guess, as far as the world is concerned, it doesn't make a difference whether we live or die. Hmm. Now it's up to us. Then the black car here. How? How is that? Po I suppose so. So, what now? Your okay. decision. Okay. Okay. Uh, is it final? No, I didn't have to like pay no one. Now, now, now. Yes. They have to. Then I should leave this place before it is too late. That this I'm burning. It's getting worse by the minute. Kira is close enough to reach it by Myrid. Maybe the Golden Queen will listen to me. Then the rest is up to them. Things would have been different without you, Saira. I will not forget you. You do what you have to. No. Dead. Letter, your letter. <laughs> the beacon. The Nermes. The, they tried to storm the temple. As the Grand Master said they would. We we tried to stop them, but they, there were just too many of them. Uh, Arendil, he he came back. Just when we thought it was too late. It's Karish, Yuslan, and, and you. He said that the High Ones got you. But that he had the Numenos with him, and and that he would save us all. Yes. Just then the Nerambees broke through the gate. But it all happened so quickly. There was this, this flash, and suddenly this rift in the sky. The light, it, it, it burns us. Can't you feel it? <laughs> Tell me one thing about you, which isn't. But I suppose it doesn't matter anymore, does it? I don't have much longer. I can feel it. Tell me, my fair lady, why? Was the beacon a trap from the very beginning? I thought it would. I thought it would save us. What? Huh. But you're here. That must mean something, right? You can stop it. You have to. Yes. Of course you will. It's what you do. It's strange, isn't it? The way life sometimes goes. 
Here I am, Jaspar Delveric, the man who for once in his life wanted to be part of something good. Man, some great hero I am. But you know what? I don't regret it. I... A great philosopher once said that every change begins with a moment of lucidity. In these moments, a veil opens, one which normally shrouds all the unwelcome truths we're aware of, but which we have buried deep within ourselves where we cannot see them. And it is only these moments in which we can make a decision. The decision to either act, or to let the moment pass until the veil seals itself again and we once more are the slaves of our habits. I don't believe in revolutions. They are too simple, too fiery, and they too often end with the opposite result of what was intended. But neither am I a cynic who has lost all faith in the world. Change is possible, but it won't come as a big bang, but rather as a long path, one that will constantly confront us with obstacles. Obstacles we can either choose to overcome, or at which we choose to quietly turn around and go back to being what we were. The sacrifice of the one who will be remembered as the prophetess is proof that I am right. Yes, some might see the downfall of Enderal as the triumph of the High Ones, but it wasn't. It was neither that nor a triumph for mankind. What we were granted was a moment of lucidity, the chance to start our own walk down a long, rocky path. The High Ones exist because we believe in them. We, our egos, give them their power, and the more we listen to their words, the more we hate them, the more powerful they become. Indeed, the beacon, this ancient machine of unknown origin, can destroy us. But it can also free us from the High Ones once and for all. If we use it right. Rumors that the Arizalians have started constructing a second uh -oh. beacon, and the knowledge that this time we are aware of its nature, give me hope that the woman I loved has not died in vain. And that we continue walking. Oh. Hyvä loppu, niin sanotusti. Tässä on loistava kyllä musiikki. Vähän oli näköjään pukeja tässä lopussa, mutta toi ei ollut kyllä loppu. Kyllä henkilö oli kyllä jatkuvasti kuollut. Perheen hauta. Niin oli neljä. Perheessä oli vähinkö plus kolme.